type, but it's Isaac type. Isaac types one from set flushing. Vega one. Where's he come from? Vega one's got up and won. And it's Senevise. What a star. Won the Caulfield Cup. Or oh, Mystic Aroma. Three lengths in. Front. There go, you mug. This meeting is being recorded. Mugs, we are back. The bean. Oh, bean! I thought you were going to intro us. <laughs> oh man, I am. I am. I was just, yeah, just a bit of disconnection there, mate. I'm, um, I'm back in business. Um, survived a wedding, a few, an engagement party, and a few other bits and pieces. But I'm now in COVID lockdown, so we are off on the Zoom <laughs> this week. So, but I do make my triumphant return, which was, um. It's probably needed after the performance of the two gentlemen on the, on the podcast with me in Moz and Lloydy after their um, their stellar effort last week. I think Lloydy was saying during the week that there was one winner between them. But, um, yeah, when you have, you know, Ruby Q just knocking off in grey shading and a few results like that, um, it's sort of easy to see how the results didn't fall our way. But, um, yeah, look, look, I'm looking forward to it. It's a ripper day. There's about 400 runners from across the border down south. All the big stables are here. Um, K-Mac and a few of the other superstars have come up here. Not gone to South Australia, interesting, interestingly enough. So um, we do have the SA Derby, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll drift across that briefly later on in the podcast. How are you, folks? Yeah, mate. Well, I'll, uh, I'll kick off and it shows your interest because it's actually the Oaks on Saturday. Oh, Oaks, is it? Oh, yeah, there you and, go. Uh, <laughs> and it actually, the background there, it looks looks a bit more like uh, the Fortitude Valley Police beat, if I'm being honest, behind you there. So I don't know about these lockdowns, but mate, Queensland Guineas Day, and Lloydie will uh, will back me up here. Um, I just don't think Dooman is our go anymore, mate. We had the fantastic day out, uh, and we've just sort of become Eagle Farm specialists, seeing them left, right, and centre. So I'm really looking forward to this week. Uh, I do every week, but this week I think there's a bit more ooze of confidence. Mally, because the beans. That's right, mate. We need a little bit of a pick me up after last weekend, and I think you're right. We get away from Doom and we get back to uh, to headquarters, and I, I think you know they say they call it Brisbane Racing headquarters, but I think it's Mugs HQ now. Uh, we made it our own. We made our own a fortnight ago. So, looking forward to getting back to the the greatest place on earth. Well, it truly is, and. Uh... Boys, I might kick us off there in race number one because we've got the 1,800 metres, a bit of a uh, modified Chris Waller handicap special this week. Uh, the big fella himself has brought up our intrigue, who I think from memory absolutely loves a good track, doesn't quite uh, get through it as well on the soft, even though his soft stats say it's probably better there. Anyway, that's just how we make conversation here, Mugs. But being you're right, we've got a heap of invaders. Um, and I think it was two weeks ago, maybe, when we were at Eagle Farm, I think it was something like five out of nine were won by the Southern. Yeah. It's coming up. So, Gay Waterhouse, Adrian Bott, Major Artie, and the first bean dog. Like, is that just pretty much your form this week? Who's not a Queenslander? Um, yeah, look, I think um, I think I actually went through it earlier. I think I've got about three Queenslanders for the day, and the rest are all Southerners. Um, look, I am going to kick it off with um, with I mean Major Artie and our intrigue at the class here, I think. But I just don't be want to getting I don't want to be getting back at Eagle Farm on the first of the day on a um, on a pretty good surface. I think we got the rail out about five, so on pace is probably going to be the place to be early. I'm with the favourite. I think um, apart from maybe Honourable Spirit, which likes to go forward and depending on, yeah, Ryan Maloney and Stewie Kendrick. Um, who knows whether Star of Michelin is going to be sitting Stone Motherless last or leading them off. That's um, always a query. So, yeah, the favourite will, um, it'll, it'll be leading or close to it. It's got form around Ostrada, which has been flying in the midweeks down in Melbourne. Um, I just think lack of speed should be winning. $2.40, thank you. Mm. It'll, um, it'll be hard to beat I, I admit um my I, well, i'm not with it i do think it'll be hard to beat but i'm shopping a bit of value in the opener and Jaden lloyd gets back on honorable spirit for the first time this prep it gets out to 1800 and Jaden's never missed a place when he's been on honorable spirit in in seven starts three wins three seconds in the third and 
We're getting $17 with our good friends. Two kilos off gets down to 53 and a half. Like you said, Ben, probably not a great deal of speed in it. So it could be, you know, on the favourites back from barrier three, just get that nice box seat. Runner. It's done nothing this prep. It's beat, you know, it's literally beaten three, uh, two horses home in its three runs, yeah. um, but all too short for it. So I think gets to that 1800 and back to Eagle Farm to a bit of a plus two starts there for a win in a second. So if we find it, you know, back to that form of last prep where it was winning, you know, listed races over those 2000 metres, it can, it can give this a shake. Yeah, it seems to have been either missed or they just don't think it's come back as good, Lloyd. So I uh, hear you, but I'm just going to argue for you for the sake of it. Um, Trevelyan boys, just... Did nothing wrong last start, albeit we uh, we missed the plunger. We're nowhere near it. Didn't even know it raced slash existed probably until uh, <laughs> last start. But it knocked off a pretty good field there in the, the usual uh, BM 2200s that we get. Um, so, look, just seems to do its best race in an Eagle Farm, and I think that's the key. If you go back through a couple of those starts at Doom and it just was never near it, uh, gets back to Eagle Farm, seems to grow a leg. You know, it's knocking off Stardome, Sir Barnabas, their weekly specialist. On this show, um, Steph Thornton starting to maybe hit a bit of form. She's she's been getting asked to do media launches, so those invites are going to stop pretty quickly if you don't start riding winners. Steph, so do it from wasn't the first. <laughs> All right. Well, after that, Spruik, let me see what she's on in race two because she might give me a good little double up. She doesn't have a ride, boys. So you know what she's going to do. <laughs> She's going to win a Trevelyan, quickly go do some media stuff because she is bloody the face of the BRC right, yep. right now. Um, but we do have Batiste Francais. Uh, now we're talking these local horses trying to get uh, a few scalps. And you got Schweda, you got Maloney, you got $5 that field. So over the 1800 again, uh, we're literally getting a cut and copy there, race one. So if we see a horse maybe like uh, Roller Coaster who gets back and storms home in this one, you can you can probably know that it's winning from everywhere. Bean, I know he's one of yours. Are you riding the Roller Coaster again for me? Oh, mate, it's too much of a Roller Coaster Mr. for me. CJ. No, it's um, no. Look, the roller, the roller coaster is just too much for me, mate. I've um, look, I'm with he is here. I think I, I'm not sure if I tipped it, but I was on. I, did, I definitely had some dollars on it last start when it just got home. Um, I think that was over the 1600, I believe. Oh, 1660, sorry. Um, look, it's been building pretty nice, this prep, two ends, Ipswich and Doom, but it gets to a track where it's going to be able to run on. Um, I first go Eagle Farm is definitely definitely the query, but um, I think third up, fitness is peaking. I think he's definitely going to get the trip the way of storming home last start so and i think five dollars ten or whatever he is yeah about i think he's about that now in the market i think that's actually a pretty good bet and i mean it's an open-ish race but i think probably a few of these should be a bit longer than perhaps what they are yeah open race mate um i'm with the bottom weight three wise men for ed cummings and benny thompson um scratched a few times in sydney from you know like a couple of those lead-ups to Randwick and Rose Hill Guineas and whatnot and by the sounds but it was all just to do with the wet tracks Ed didn't want to run him on those tracks um so he gets a gets a good four this afternoon or Saturday afternoon on a dry eagle farm deck which is going to suit um look three runs in this time they haven't been all that bad being a fair way but wet tracks like I said and Last start was one of the few runners that um, in that highway or the, the midway, whatever it was, to make a bit of ground behind French Bonnet at Randwick. So 1,400 up to the 1,800, bit of a steep jump, but I, th I thought what it's been doing on wet trucks is good enough to want to be with it at $9 on a dry. Yeah. There are, well, I absolutely hate this race. This is, <laughs> this is doing my head. This is ridiculous. Um, Look, one out of left field, I'm, I'm just, again, looking for probably anything here, but uh, I don't even know if I want to say it, but I just thought Go Darcy last start probably behind Reggie Wood was a pretty good form line coming into this race. Uh, I know you got Hostage of War in there as well. well. Just maybe it's getting to the distance now where 
I don't know, it can turn around that zip from four at Eagle Farm because that's pretty much all we're getting. And I'm getting $16. Taylor Marshall, he's got a few big scalps later in the day. Um, but it's one of those races, boys. I mean, Octavian's even there going again, Lloydie. So I'll take you back to the old uh, Gatton specialist out there. Uh, <laughs> no good, but what a field, no. hey? This is, this is Brisbane Racing Winter Carnival 101. It's a, it's a, it's just, it's an interesting field. I think roll, yeah. Anyway, I, yeah. Let's let's move on, shall we? <laughs> we certainly shall, and I'm uh, I'm more than happy to because race three, I think we get a little bit more class, if you could say that. And 1300 meters, uh, so we're coming back to a bit more of a specialist trip. But you got the man himself, Chris Waller. He's bringing up an army this week, boys. $3 favourite, Care Royale. Uh, it's going to go first up, you know, last prep sort of have showed those glimpses of, of being a, a better than normal horse. But we've got the locals here as well. The Golan Show, the Heathcote Show, they come to town, as well as Baloo, who's back from the races. I believe uh, its last start there was the Group 1, um, whatever it was, but behind Profundo oh, yeah. back. That's the one back in the day. So Lloydie, Group One form, you get nine fifty for a horse Baloo, carrying nothing on the back. Two from two first up, um, Eagle Farm. The question or class? The uh, question? I don't think class is the question. I think she is certainly good enough. Um, it, it's a tricky little race, like you said. I'm. I'm with the top weight, actually, in Robo Deer. I've always liked her. Um, John O'Shea and Karen McAvoy combine. Similar to Three Wise Men, really. I just don't think she goes a yard in the wet. Um, she ran 12th of 15, beaten nine lengths the other last start behind Heresy and Zapateo. Um, and then, you know, you, but you go back through her, her runs, and I remember she won or she... Well, she won or she ran second to maybe Jamea in a in a decent three-odd Phillies race earlier in the year um, or end of last year, I should say. So she brings that form to this. She can certainly be a player. She's going to get back. There's going to be a nice tempo on for her. Um, watch for her late. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. I think there's a few in this race that, um, particularly for this from the Southerners that are just um, have been running on wet tracks and perhaps potentially not their go. I'm um I'm with the other Waller runner in Minsk moment. Um, look, it's one from two on a heavy, but I think um I think its best work will be on the good surface. It's um I'm hoping they're running on because it definitely likes to get back, but there's pace pace drawn inside and out, so I think it should be fairly genuine. And look, with um I, I know they're you know, combined about 12 or 13 lengths, but with form sort of around Marzu and it's not a wet tracker and it was, you know, it wasn't terrible in um, in the in a benchmark 78 and then the list of Derby Munro down there at Rose Hill Gardens on an absolute mm. bottomless surface. I think, um, yeah, with Jimmy Byrne on board, tucked in behind them, Jordan Barrier three, if he can get it sort of three pairs back, one out, I think, um, I think Minsk moment might surprise a few at about the $5 quote. Mm. Uh, mate, well, I'm not going to be too surprised because I'm with you here. Uh, I don't know. We never really know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, do we? <laughs> no, but, we don't. <laughs> um, even uh, even that last prep, mate. You've got you know Coolmore Classic lined up. Um, I guess in context, what five lengths behind Home Affairs down the straight when Home Affairs beat everything by three lengths that day uh, stands out pretty good. I guess. There's probably better races that this horse might have been able to go around in. So whether it's a case of trying to get a few easy scalps, get the rating up maybe for something down the line uh, here at the old Bris Vegas Winter Carnival. So 550 is a bit of a short quote for a bit of a non-winner the last two, but Chris Waller, Polish. Hello. Yep. <laughs> Hello. If release yeah. the bin, if a, if release the beans comes out and brains them, I'm, I'll give. I'm almost going to give it away because it's not been going very good. But I tell you what, oh, that's gonna that's gonna upset the belly a bit. <laughs> yeah, mate, I've I've had to jump off too. We've we've well, uh, what are we? I don't know. Well, we've got six six run this prep. Gee, that's flown. Um, although no, there's a few trials in there. You know, like good friends, do your full guide a bit better. Um, yeah. but look, I don't know. It's they're all sort of around around that shot. These this sort of three year old crop, aren't they, Lordy? Yeah, they are. It's, a, it's an interesting sort of group this year, I reckon. Like, 
like I, I give that Minsk moment a chance, but like you go back through its form, it's certainly good enough. To... Hasn't really come back as well this prep, but same for Elise Labine. So you go back well six months yeah. ago and he's he's winning everything up here, and now he um he just doesn't look like he wants to wants to try. So I don't know. Oh, uh, if there's one thing that we do, boys, it's try, and it's our hardest, we hope. <laughs> um, and finding winners, so sometimes we go, all right, trust us there. We're at our, at our home ground here, monks. We're at Eagle Farm. Uh, now, Lloydie, we might kick off with you here in race four. Over the mile, you're a bit of a miler yourself in life in general. Uh, um, not quite fast enough for the shorter, not quite fit enough for the longer, so you hit that sweet spot. <laughs> But we don't give up on you. But I reckon you've given up on Gave Us Up because there was a phase there, and you will remember it fondly, but you were tipping this thing every single week to any bloke, man, hairdresser, dog walker that would listen to you. You're getting $2.60. You've got your brother on board claiming two kilos. Um, mm. Are you back on board the Gave Us Up team? Well, just going through its four, mate, it's won three of its, what, like last six, And it sort of goes win, fail, win, fail, win, fail. And I reckon every time it wins, I jump back on and then it loses and then I jump off and it wins. So I'm going to be smart. I'm going to stay off because it'll get beaten. I'll get back on next start. But, mate, <laughs> Rocky form, Factory Warrior. Won, won at Rocky last start. Beat Master Jamie, who is at a $26 chance in the Archer, um, over the 1,500 and was pretty strong late. Admittedly, only had 51 kilos on its back. But it only goes up two kilos to 53 here. Gets to the mile, which it likes. Um, it's had, had a few you guys at Eagle Farm for not much success, but it's run a second in there. And I reckon you go back through its runs and they were probably in some tougher races um, earlier in its career too. So, look, I think at uh, $14, you can give it a shake because Master Jamie goes good. There we go. Bean, wouldn't be a, uh, a month's podcast without a Master Jamie reference, would it? No, no that's right, mate. Um, well, Lloyd is going to kill me because I'm actually with Factory Warrior. I was hoping he'd be on something else because he's going to be sitting there shaking his head now all upset with me. But, um, look, I think it was a super win up there at um, at Rocky. Um, beat Obviously beat home Master Jamie, like Lloyd said. Don't want to repeat too much of that. Bit of extra weight. Loves this trip. Um, it'll be on pace. I think that's always a bonus at Eagle Farm. And it's sort of a similar long straight where you kind of need to be, you know, in the first or the inside three lanes. So, yeah, I think at $15, it's it's a pretty good bet in an open race. And, yeah, I've, I can't beat with Gabus up. There's absolutely no chance. Not after it knocked us out of that quality. <laughs> yeah. No, don't, uh, don't remind me. Um, no, look, I'm, I'm sticking pretty pretty true to the form and what is a uh, horses for courses sort of pick. General Dubai on top for myself. Last start, one of their winner there at Eagle Farm. Um, knocked off Bullfinch and something else that day that we we're all over. But I think that form reads pretty good. You will notice, though, uh, top order is back up and about yeah. there, boys. So there was it. And it's on the, the quick week back up uh, over – the mile when it probably wants 2,800. So uh, who's the trainer again? Uh, KC Anderson, first name Kim or Kane, don't know. But uh, anyway, trying to get the miles in the legs for a big winter prep with a uh, top order. But this week, Mugs, General Dubai to go two from two there. Just seems to love Eagle Farm too. Hasn't missed a place there. Let's hope it's four from four at the track in Saturday. Yeah. Um, now, lads, time to, to vibe up a bit because when we talk Brisbane Winter Carnival, there's a big two-year-old race that we all know and love. Uh, we've got superstars such as the Autumn Sun, Rothfire, Prince Fawaz that are on the honour roll of the JJ Atkins. And you've got a field of two-year-olds, Steady Ready. Now, Lloydie, we don't have to try and remember the name of Steady Ready this week because it is in front of it's us. There. But we're talking, we're talking your Peter Moody's, we're talking your Godolphins, we're talking your Annabelle Nishams, your Tommy Buttons, Bean, your Desley Forsters. Yep. They're all bringing something to the table here because we've got about 18 horses, I believe, maybe more, maybe less, don't really read the numbers. Um, but JJ Atkins' aspirations are probably on the table and at the 1,000, you get to sort of see that race start to be 
a little bit more in the conversation. But Lloydie, are we going back to probably Queensland's top two-year-old Formula One with steady ready at $2.60? Uh, no, we're not. We're going <laughs> okay. back. To, we're going back to Victoria for this one. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, to be honest, but Pete Moody brings up Brereton. Um, nothing wrong with this form over 1,000 metres in three Victorian runs. Um, beaten in the debut on, on debut by Kiki Express, just got nutted on the post and then uh, won the, what is it, the Maribyrnong? Maribyrnong? Maribyrnong. The really hard one to say. So it won that on Melbourne Cup Day um, and then ran fourth behind Ebhar Baldinho um, in the Merson Cooper. I think that race was called. Trialed at Deegan over the 650 and just was there for a bit of a hit out. Jimmy Byrne rode it that day in the trial. James Allman hops on and barrier three is just going to get that gun run in behind. I don't think it has to lead, but it certainly won't be um, you know, worse than midfield. It'll just be getting that lovely little trail on steady ready. And I think if he's uh, if he's where he was in the spring, he can win this. Yep. I'm um I'm very keen. I think um I think this market's got it all wrong. The Queensland hype is um has all happened after after one ring. Steady ready steady ready was pretty impressive. But um yeah look Brereton I, I think in that um in the the Cooper at Caulfield as well. I think third in that race was Moko, who's come out in the Sydney Carnival in pretty impressive in behind um, Williamsburg a couple of times. So look, yeah, Brereton, yeah, seven dollars is a spoil. Should be about four or five in the market. I think get on right now. Yeah, boys, I'll agree with you to a degree. Uh, question that I always have with these these uh, Melbourne horses coming up. It's going the other way around, but. You got to be up here to find out and do it, don't you? Um, otherwise, I didn't mind Honey Pot at a little bit of odds there down in, but I think we're not looking at getting the start. Where I think fifth emergency there for the gone run, but Honey Pot's always in that one to uh, you know get the eyes on. I think it got rolled at a dollar fifty and then a dollar forty. So be interesting to see if they get a run somewhere on the weekend with Honey Pot as well, but. Three from three and Brereton, gee whiz. Jimmy Orman on board, two boys. Yep, the man in form. <laughs> yeah. In form. Well, speaking of uh, in form, we're about to tuck into the quaddy there, Mugs, but uh, just on the spot, boys, we might just get some group one form. It's going to say hype us up, but to be quite honest, this week, we might just get it out of the way because... South Australia racing is on. Um, I'm not too sure if anyone really watches it, but if you do, maybe, I don't know, let us know if you do. I don't even know where it is on a map, to be honest. Uh, but they've got the Oaks. I guess in a couple of weeks, you got a Goodwood, which may lead into a bit of Stradbroke prowess in, uh, in form. But no, all jokes aside, Group 1 racing is always good. Um, News to the minute, though, and Bean, we'll get to, uh, no, Lloydy, we'll start with you. We seem to be starting with Lloydy, even though the segues never really uh, come through. But Al Patronus, you made a bit of a case a couple of weeks ago, is not racing there on Saturday, has been scratched the fave. Yeah, mate, uh, like you say, it, I think it was a, a hoof abscess or something along those lines. So it takes a little bit of the glamour out of the oaks. But um, look, Tricky little race, so I'm I'm going to go a little bit wide and one I would like the run of last start was Morris Set um, ran seventh in the uh, the eighteen hundred lead up, um, no no real room in the straight hit the line nicely enough over eighteen hundred and will want further again but fourteen dollars the place um, that'll that'll do. And Ben, you're the Oak specialist, mate. You love Adelaide. You love Morfordville. Um, yeah, look, I think um, SA Oaks, I think Bonds of Perla is a pretty good bet here. Um, gets a key weight swing on um, uh, the favourite in this weight race, My Whisper. I think Jamie Carson's obviously she's going to be pretty popular with punters. But um, look, El Patroness back to a good deck, back in trip, I think it's a bit of a query. Um, I just think this horse has the most upside. I think Corsten's are the trainers. I think um, at about $10, I think it's I think it's actually a pretty good bet in this race. I'll probably be playing, which I don't normally do in the in the Oaks. But anyway, I will be getting on top of it. Uh, yeah, look, 
<laughs> Simply put, I'm just going to stick locals, mate. And if you're looking for, I guess, omen bets or uh, anything, just give you a bet here. Mac and cheese has got to be the omen bet of the day. Barrier 18, but it's over. Look, barrier 18 over 2,000 metres. You hope that Baza will frigging get this horse in somewhere. Exploded late there. Uh, two starts to go to win. And then last start behind the obvious form, I would start in favourite at two dollars eighty. So, be good one for the cheese. I think. Uh, I think the mac and cheese is a um, my runners yeah, horse too. My, is um, my <laughs> runners horse. So there you go. So you might get a crowd there at South Australia. It'd, be, it'd start two dollars by the time the race. Just forget forget the Jamie Carr fact. I'll be all over that thing. Well, half of them probably think Jamie Carr is riding it anyway. So. <laughs> So there you go. You get the best of both worlds. All right, Muggs. Well, now we've got the uh, the toilet chat out of the way from our friends at South Australian Racing. Back up to God's country, Queensland, Eagle Farm. Can't put it any clearer than that, but it's quarter time, 1,200 metres. It's the Treasury Brisbane Plate. Uh, and that man that you spoke of there before being K-Mac, K-Mac I should say, brother of J-Mac, um, is up here with Erenti, who's lightly raced, but $3.90 favourite. Lloydie, you're the former stoop, mate. And maybe tell us a little bit more about this boy. There we go. Got there. Didn't jump the gun because all I can see on my screen right now is Paladas is running, and I don't know if I want to watch. <laughs> yeah, mate. Um, I think, in, honest, in all honesty, I think we've got a false favourite in Aaron Shree. Um I don't think it beat anything last start. I, I can't. I'm shocked it's favourite. Leave it out of your quaddy because it. Uh, I, I know it won well, but seriously, it's coming out of a midweek Wednesday maiden into this class three against some pretty handy horses. Like, please. Bean will probably yeah. tip it now. Um, no, you know, you, mate, you're going to crucify you're going to crucify me with what I've um. You can you can probably pick it if you have a quick scroll through. I'm actually with the um the stable shifted. Who's your dealer? <laughs> so I believe previously with the Golan stable, it's now with um, the Friedman Yardley Friedman, who's got the stable up here at the Gold Coast. Um, look from the inside barrier, that's probably a slight slight crew because it does like to get back. But I think there's a stack of pace here, like Aaron Tree or lead, Pascal, maybe the best. There's a few others like Glorious Ruby who will like to be handy. I think this race will be run super quick. And um, first up is um, this bloke's go absolutely flies. Um, when he was at his best, he goes okay, but he has gone under obviously at the um the dollar the dollar sixty dollar thirty a few of those times he's come unstuck. I'm hoping the new stable have got him rolling, and I think um yeah first up here in this pretty open class three, I think eight dollars ten worth a worth another chance for the for for me just to get a bit back on him perhaps. Yeah, interesting uh, runner there. I mean, like. TJ wouldn't get rid of him, you know, for any unknown reason, whether it's yeah. been a bit of a, you know, in the ownership group, they're pretty prominent with TJ too. So there's always a story in Queensland racing and uh, yeah. the mugs, we hear it all. So Tony, you know, we haven't had Golden's Gospel for a week. Might need to get you on next week to uh, get the hard hitting truth. But before <laughs> you get stuck in Lloydie, I'm going to Going a bit left field here, boys. Um, now, we called many of things, and one of our nicknames is the Toowoomba Mafia. And the Mafia has sent me the good word that Bad Barista is an absolute moral for Eagle Farm justice. One from one at the track and the distance. Uh, three, three goes at the track, sorry, boys, to get your hopes up. But if you go through the form there, um, last sort of three, four starts, been around pretty good horses and not really getting beaten too far. So... She's a uh, she's a real fly home have one last crack kind of horse. So from barrier five, going to be smothered up. Just going to be a fair bit of luck involved. But again, I'm with you there, Lloydie. This horse, Aaron T, never heard of it. Three dollars ninety. No thanks. Yeah, well, that's it, mate. Um, I'm on a similar sort of form, well, not necessarily form reference, but um, situation has been in new stable comers and. Friedman's previously had Seduction Queen and now uh, Steve O'Day and Matt Hoisted have got her. Um, nothing wrong with her form. I know she she doesn't win out of turn. She's only won three from 17 and she's been 
in the modern money on seven occasions, but you've got to sort of go back through a form and to really find where she's run a bad race. Um, so look, she's, she's trialed up here twice. She won at the sunny coast and then um, fourth behind Apache chase and Orbison uh, last time out, those two cleared out, but um, good friend of the show, M Lang. She was on both times, and Jaden. Um, well, she actually she actually managed to hold and not win the trial by ten lengths. So um, might be yeah. saying something. Jaden Jaden goes on, fifty five kilos on her back. Look, she's going to be handy. She's got a nice first up record. I think she can give it a shake. At oh, what is she twenty one dollars? Yeah, yeah, it's super open. Yep. It's definitely a false favorite, one hundred percent. Yeah, I'd just be worried that uh, Emily's probably a bit stronger than Jaden, to be honest. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, maybe it was like a, a bit of a NRL style three-way trade there. They had go and trade out who's the dealer, seduction queen in the, in the process. And her day hoisted have got, got a deal in there as well. So anyway, mm. not a bad little race that one. Um, but there's a couple of main event smugs that we're getting to now. And this is, uh, this is where you really need to, to listen astutely because we're about to hone in. And uh, no better place and time to do it than the Queensland Guineas. And over the mile, Chris Waller's got a bit of a stranglehold on a lot of these horses. But this field, I think, is a bit more wide open than what the market suggests with the big dogs. Because you got, well, you got a, and it's crazy how time flies, but you got a horse like Character, who's your $4.40 favourite for Godolphin. Um, now, it was only uh, three Four weeks ago now, sorry, that he was going around in the uh, the Australian Derby. Um, so drop back to the mile in four weeks with the trial in between. I mean, the big stables can do it, but how many grand finals do horses bloody have? You go down the list there, the first local you see is a horse named Ashgrove there, Bean, which I know Ooh. you are more <laughs> or less the king of the Ashgrove fan club. Now, you, uh, you didn't like him first up. Fair enough. That was 1,400. 1600 maybe on the way to another derby. Um, no, look, mate, I'm gonna have to pass on. Uh, the... Are you gonna have a bit of a play for the boss man's top seed this week? No, nah, look, I'm gonna have to pass on, um, on that one, mate. Um, I did bend the knee earlier this year, and that is the way I've cited here for K Mac and the John O'Shea stable. Look, um, it's building nice into this 1200, uh, 1400 out to the mile now. Won a pretty good race um, last start. We obviously have – I oh don't know. Um, anyway, I think there's plenty of pace in this race. I think it gets back. It just needs a good track. Um, it's it's heavy form. I think it's had three starts for one placing, but it just doesn't go a yard on it. needs a good surface. Drawn in's perfect. Um, it's got form around Valana and Lock Eagle last start, which, you know, Lock Eagle was sort of $2.40, I think, in the market that day down south. Um, I think he could win this in $5. Happy to be with. Mate, um, I was really keen Greenbelt, to be honest. Um, so a bit disappointing that it's been scratched this morning. Um, but yeah. one horse that comes out of that that same race, the, the Daybreak Lover, was Cape Breton. Uh, I ran fourth for Chris Waller. Uh, a little bit unlucky at the back and sort of had to duck and weave up the home straight and did his best work late. So I'm, I'm happy to be with him now at $16. Goes from $1,400 out to the mile. Um, we've seen Waller sort of target this race in the past. Copper Archer ran second or third in it behind Private Eye and Apache Chase en route to a Queensland Derby win. Um, so, and you know, I think this, I don't necessarily think this horse will be a, a Derby prospect. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see this as his grand final fourth up. Um, Luke Dittman goes on. Barry Seven is going to get a really nice run. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be with. Yeah, nice, nice uh, there, Lloydy. Didn't mind it. I'm going one different. Before we get Greenbelt, I've only just seen the scratching news there as well. Any goss, Lloydy, that you, you've heard? No, I haven't. I was trying to find it earlier, but... Uh... Just that's all right. Yet. Well, they've got to keep him fresh for the Everest yeah. and Melbourne Cup, so there's probably uh, a little bit of thinking behind that. Um, I'm going with uh, with the horses just freshly back on the scene here, boys. White Water, which first up, I think three bucks was an absolute gift from heaven because I think this horse is a little bit that cut above, and when David Van Dyke gets one, um, you know that he gets one. Put it that way, but. Hasn't seen beyond a mile. So, again, Lloyd, 
I'm sort of thinking your traffic here where second up, this could be a little bit of a, a kill. Um, not that it's ever that easy, but a lot of these horses are obviously in town for lead ups to derbies and, and further. Whereas this horse second up, Bosley goes on board, been a little bit of money for it already. I think you can probably in hindsight after this race, you know, say three or four of them were, were primed ready for this and others are going to kick on into the campaign. So yeah, it'd be a happy watch for the Moza if I can get this fella home, the dream team. <laughs> One one that I'll give a little mention to, to keep an eye on, uh, Antonio Giovanni. I've been a bit of a fan of his from his um, debut run. I know he got beaten. He took a while to – he only broke his mail at Wyon last start. Um, but interesting that he's brought him up here because he's always looked like a horse that will really relish a trip. So he could potentially be a derby horse and have that sort of flashing light run like we saw from Kukaracha uh, 12 months ago. So, yeah. Can you make sure you have ten dollars on it or something so I don't hear about it during the week though? <laughs> Just in case it does love. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, this is this uh, I back Kukaracha after this run last year in the derby, so I'll I'll be looking. There we go, B now. <laughs> Link Lloyd Bingo's just paid out dividends. We had Mus <laughs> Jamie mentioned and Kukaracha mentioned. So yeah. <laughs> we're good to continue on. Um <laughs> It honestly feels like Antonio Giovanni is eight years old, that horse, because I reckon it's been around forever, but it's only had the well, six start. There was Antonio Giuseppe. Yep, yeah, that probably explains it. The same colours, yeah. <laughs> uh, to be honest, probably with Chris Waller's operation, probably the same horse. They just paint some black bloody socks on it and start again, yeah. don't they? Right, it's main event time, boys, and uh, let's get up and about. And being, you're, you're doing well to keep the sponsors happy, but this would be the one week that you can wear your off fire hat and absolutely be up and about <laughs> for it because the big boy is back. Yep. And uh, it's massive kudos to all involved because we know, we know what he's sort of been through uh, over the last couple of years. So Roth fire is back first up, you know, longer and more ambitious Plans obviously in target than uh, the sports bet victory plate stakes handicap whatever it is on Saturday. Two dollars favourite, um, two dollars thirty. Sorry, gee, they've come for him. You got the little star Tontes in there as well. Doesn't run a bad race. Doesn't know how to. But again, a few of these names here, boys, just gets you bloody excited. You got Camp de Rupi, uh was huge there last start uh, behind Kementari, which is always a good form line. Baller back for going, ranch hand, Scalapini's first up record is immaculate. Um, 12 months ago, It's Me was almost the next big thing there as well. You're getting $26. Bean, Nick and over, $31. Tell me why you're plunging into it. <laughs> um, look, mate, mate uh, sorry to disappoint. I won't be with um, won't be with Nick and over this week. I, I'm actually su- still running that thing. Just it's just I think it's had about 400 starts, but it's not um it's not not won that many. Uh, look, Rothfire just wins this. Um, Honest Bobby came out during the week and was ultra bullish about his chances. I just think um it leads Scalapini and Counter Rupee will probably be handy, but if it's got the burners on like we all expect from the champ, I think it should just have these all beat by about the three hundred and cruise through. The hat will be back um coming into the group ones, mate. I'm saving it for once he's um once he's up and about. But um yeah, look, I think he wins to take the two thirty. I'm, I'm uh, approaching this race in a in a bit of a smarter betting strategy sense. Actually, here's what I'm going to do, Mugs. I'm going to not back him on Saturday for the fact that I don't want to take two thirty about a horse who's coming back from a an injury ridden campaign. Um, but I'm going to back him in the strat break at around ten dollars now because if he wins on Saturday, strat break price is gone. If he fails, if he's still injured, nominations aren't out for the Stradbroke yet. So Bobby won't nominate and you get your money back for the Stradbroke. So that's <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, and if he does get, if he does get beat on Saturday, I think it'll be by Count to Ruby. Um, the, you know, second in the Golden Eagle to I'm Thunderstruck, won the gong. Um, last start, second behind Kamantari in Sydney on a heavy track. Gets to a big wide open eel farm on a rock hard deck. Fourth up, please. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be with him. Him anyway, um, over Rothfire. If Rothfire's right, he, he wins. It's like Bean said, they, you know, if he if he's spot on, 
he'll be three in front of the 200 and they won't catch him. But I think if anything's going to do it, count to Rupee will. All right. Um, Lloydie, I'm, uh, I'm sort of looking your way as well. Um, you're right. If he's up and goes, he'll win. So I hope he really does because even if you look at his, his record there, first up last prep after the big layoff, you know, within a couple of lengths to Nature Strip and Eduardo, you know, so it's talking a serious bloody horse but whether or not just the uh the reins are a bit loose to let him go around and do the job horse that we were talking about to come magic millions time in a big way is jamea um came back on board getting a pretty good price of 21 dollars last two starts chuck a line through heavy track not its go huge run in the magic millions um albeit a long way back ninth just blocked and bashed and smashed and crashed i think they're sort of uh given that Giving this horse a chance to reset with a, an easy trial to come back here almost first up and, and get back on the good services there. So, I mean, you go back to Jamea's form, it's got form around every bloody good horse in the nation. So, I think it's as good as it is. Rothfire is back and being talked about gives us a chance to probably get something a little bit over as if you don't like the champ on Saturday. Mm. I'll give you a spruik for Jamea. So, I spoke to Luke Price, co trainer yesterday um had her nominated in a three or in the three-year-old race earlier in the day where we were tipping uh i don't even know what we tipped in that now um anyway had her nominated there she would have had to have carried 60 kilos over the 1300 he said they wanted to split her and counter rupee up but his quote was watch for a late she could be dynamite on the hard track and we get more prize money for running second in the victory than what we do for winning the three-year-old so if that's not a bit of a push that he's bringing two horses up that he reckons can run one, two here, I'm not here. Yeah, so. well, and uh, that's that's breaking news there, Muggs, because Nick Moy mm. only gave us the push for Cam Rupi there. <laughs> there uh, in the group chat. So I knew there's always more. You journalists, hey, there's you always can get more on the story, website and there? read it yourself for once. Jesus. <laughs> Hey, I'm loyal to the uh, Monks Punting website only, mate. So that's all. And plus, we don't really know how to read too well. Uh, now, boys, back on track because there's a bit of redemption at stakes here in the get out stakes. Uh, the punters are pretty forgiving looking at these early flux. So, Mugs, 1400 metres at Eagle Farm. You know what race is. Is going to be run over those conditions and their horse that we're going to be talking about now go wanji is going to be wanting to run those conditions on saturday to then potentially run those conditions a month later it's got to carry 57 barrier 12 the cast he stays on board two dollars 30 for go wanji boys start with whoever wants to start but are you going back to the well or do you just think that maybe the spruik's not there this is this is probably going to be the toughest test to date for go wanji anyway uh, no, he's a living, living, breathing certainty on the weekend. Yeah, uh, he should be winning, I think. Well, that's good audio. Bean, we'll start with you. You're more confident by the sound of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, he's um, no, he's he's living, breathing. Should have won last start. Um, I, I like I said, I think he's black type all over. Um, all through last prep. Um, yeah, he he wins. Take it now. Yeah, I agree. Um, you just have to go through all his runs, and he's never far away, even when he's getting beaten. Should have, should have won last start. I don't know what Larry was doing, but anyway, he stays on. But uh, I won't go too much more into it. Flash, a little bit of a flashback uh, or throwback Thursday, if you will. Twelve months ago, this very race was Garibaldi when it got beaten a lip by Fender. Remember, <laughs> remember that? I do remember that. <laughs> Last race, and it was like three cents to a dollar eighty, and absolutely motored home. And uh, yeah, the punters were left on the floor. But anyway, now we get Go Wanji to do the same. Wow. Mm, um. Yes, I think it's going to do the same. So I don't, I'm not backing Go Wanji. Uh, I love your confidence has always been. Uh, Lloydie, I'm surprised you didn't point this one out because there's a journey up north that uh, this horse is going to be taking, Ventura Ocean. Archer, starter, slot holder, uh, grows 
the leg up here in Queensland. Two from two at Eagle Farm. Loves uh, getting Andrew Mellion on board there as well. But more importantly, loves the hard going. So zip from five on the softs. Finally gets the old hard, rock hard, Eagle Farm, good two surface. Um, you're right. I'm just looking outside, go, Wanji, because you're going to get the same setup. I mean, you've got a big field coming into the straight, barrier 12 for go, Wanji. She's going to be she's going to be last. So she's either going to have to weave through or go widest. And if the rail is hot, um, well, a horse like Ventura Ocean Barrier 3 kicks up the inside at you, bloody beauty. So on to an archer, mate. What do you reckon about Ventura Ocean's chances in a race oh, like that? I mean, it's a chance if it jumps on Thursday, but not on Saturday with the rest of the field. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the archer, mate, not, uh, not this race because it just wins on Saturday. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> next Thursday. It can jump next Thursday. Him and, him and Ty Zone can start together from the from the top of the straight and the rest of them can jump from the 1300 meter start like the rest of them <laughs> maybe uh race. well maybe that's maybe that's what they're aiming for mate they're going to start now and just keep it running around for for next week just to finish off at the yeah, 1300 just... so strategy <laughs> anyway well mugs uh it's a big day it's a huge day it's queensland guineas day of course it is we start to get into the straight broke season where the mugs really hone in uh but Ben, we'll start with you i know you're always a big eagle farm player give us the banger mate and have you found something around the grounds that the mugs can plunge into um yeah i have so i think um bean's banger for this week is he is in the second race of the day i think that'll kick us off with a, about a five dollar priced winner and then around the grounds we're off um the sydney meet this week we're down at hawkesbury racetrack survived the floods um best of luck to them down there and in the gold cup i think um look Kerwin's lane was super last start i think about six dollar quote i think it's a i think it's a pretty good bet in the gold cup down there race nine at hawkesbury so that's from me nice mate um i'm going i'm gonna go kate Breden. <sighs> As Lloyd is locked this week at 16s. I think it's a fantastic each way bet at the mile on Saturday. A um, bit of value. It would have been Green Belt, but um, I thought there was two winning chances in that race. Green Belt was one of them and Kate Brett and the other. So that leaves me with that. Um, and, mate, around the grounds, I'm joining you in the Hawkesbury Gold Cup. I'm not Ooh. tipping Cohen's Lane. And <laughs> you'll crucify me for this, but I'm actually tipping Olmedo. I know. Oh. Oh, yeah. What? I, I know. Yep. No. Go, 12, 12 months ago, it, it won that list of the tail stakes up here at Doom. But, um, runs since then, we've seen it go around a BRC sprint behind Elmwood Kingdom to Farney, beat only one home in a Stradbroke, and then sixth in the Star Kingdom, 10th in the All Age Stakes, where it was a wait for age group one mile, carried the 59 that day. It gets back to a Hawkesbury Gold Cup in, under handicap conditions and still with 59. So doesn't go up for going from a group one to a group three. I think barrier eight, third up, can go forward, roll along. Um, it'll, it'll give them something to chase. But <laughs> yeah, what, after 200 yeah, metres and then it bloody folds over. And I just think it's a better chance than a $21 pop. But anyway, I knew, I knew I'd get this for tipping it. Well, you deserve it. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. As long as you understand that, that's fine. Yep. I do. All right. Okay. Well, look, I'll try to bring some, uh, some. Well, can't really say confidence back because I'm, I'm tipping my best for the day. Uh, I really like Mink's moment, uh, in race number three. So that's my must have. Just think, just think the horses has aspired to put it all together now, and I'm keeping the, uh, the Adelaide Fever. Um. We've just been getting some messages from Racing SA in the last 15 minutes that they didn't really quite like our commentary. But one race before the Oaks. So to give me a reason to watch Adelaide Racing for uh, about half an hour span there, Harley moving in the Chairman Stakes there over 2,000 metres, race six there, Mugs. Last start was, um, I think, almost joint favourite with Daisies. And Daisies goes around in the Oaks. Pretty uh, up there in the market and absolutely fucking murdered Daisy's put it away. So I'm guessing that, that it wins this and then goes on to the Derby Harley moving. So um, could be another 
long way back. Mm. Yeah, and I've literally I've just sort of flicked through the form and saw it, and eyes lit up. Two dollars eighty, Lloyd, you can get two. Wow, value. You can't eat value. value. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, Marks. Put it on your plate and eat it up. It'd be the best value you've ever <laughs> eaten. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Oh. Well, that's all well, from us, Muggs. It's uh, I think it's it's members rewards day out there on Saturday too, so it should be a packed house. I think Lloydie might grace the uh, world with your presence at the track. At yeah, some mate, point, I'll, be there. I'll do my duties and go and shake hands and sign photos and <laughs> take photos. Um, but so yeah, looking forward to it. Well, great. If uh, if you're doing that, means I can sit at the back and drink beers and carry on like an absolute. Galah, which is what I seem to do yeah. best too. And uh, Bean, I guess you're in for a, a nice solid afternoon sitting in comfort with the big screen on, hey? Uh, yeah, lockdown for me, mate. So a couple of cases of golds and perhaps a bit of racing on in the background. I'm churning away through a few of these tips. Hopefully we get a few more winners this week. <laughs> Easy. Well, good luck out there, Muggs. Uh, Keep following for the good times and we'll have some uh, some big things kicking off while we've got the bull. Is that next week as well? We've yep. got uh, – and just Brisbane Racing gets better and better. We'll put, put through some uh, some big tipping comps and competitions over the Brisbane winter. So, ciao, ciao. See you, Muggs. <laughs>